Oh, it's way cooler than I thought. Whoa. finally here. This is the Garage Vlogs mini trike setup. I ordered this chassis from the Garage Vlog. Like well, the lead time when I ordered was 12 to 14 weeks. It was pretty much right dead in the center at 13 when it arrived. The list of things needed to complete was it, here and there kind of mixed and matched, not great as far as what was actually needed. So I did as much research as I could, tried to organize a list of things that I needed. And I think that I've got most of the items. There's some items that I haven't picked up just because I wanted the trike here to start looking at before I actually purchased. Tires and wheels, at least at the time that I was shopping for all my stuff, was pretty difficult to find. Uh, I ended up picking up some Hoosier dirt track tires for this, which I dropped off at a tire shop this morning. And I ended up having to find wheels second hand. They were still new, but I just got a phone call from the tire shop that one of them appears to be bent. So we're gonna see. My goal for the end of this video is to get this thing up as a roller at the, at the best. I expect that I'm gonna have to do a lot of shopping for hardware and things like that. What I think that I have here is the chassis, the front fork, and the wheelie bar setup. It's got an adjustable wheelie bar on the back. It's all rigid all the way around. It's made for a Predator Ghost engine, which is what I picked up. So we're gonna dive in. I'm not coming from any point of authority on any of this. It's been a long time since I built a motorcycle and I have no experience with small engine stuff like this. There's our wheelie bar with our rod ends for our adjustability. Uh, we've got the threaded bungs welded in the ends. Welds on the, the chassis in general are okay. They're okay. They're gonna do fine. We're not looking at trophy truck stuff. We've got some stickers and, oh, it looks like some tube plugs. This is obviously the front forks. So there we go. <laughs> that is one oddball looking front fork, crazy wide. Everything's plasma cut, it looks like. Maybe use a little bit of cleanup on the, on the plasma edges, but again, it'll do. For what we're doing, it's pretty silly stuff. I'm gonna start getting some stuff assembled on this. I'm going to dry assemble the whole car, get it up and running before I tear it all back down and do powder coating of all of the parts that I wanna do. Uh, I, have a guess that I want to weld on some brackets and things like that. One of the things that I do want to do with this trike is I want to make myself some sort of carrying area for an RC. Obviously, if you don't know, I'm an R this is an RC based channel typically. And I plan to take this to events. There's a little putt around and I'd like to have a place to haul a rig or two while I go around. So we'll probably design up something, have it laser cut and get that welded in. As far as other things that I expect I'll be welding. Doesn't have any sort of uh, bump stops for the triple trees before it hits the chassis and maybe some tank mounts, line mounts, things like that. So there's some work to do. Again, what I hope to get done by the end of this is to have it setting as a roller, put the engine in there, mock up some of the things here and there. I definitely don't have everything I need and I believe that we're going to have a lot of trips to get hardware is my guess. I'm going to get to work. Bolt looks a little long. <laughs> that bolt is significantly longer than it needs to be. Let's dry fit this wheelie bar. All the hardware's in there just loose. Jam nuts aren't on the rod ends or anything like that. Pick an arbitrary position at this point. Wheelie bar uses standard, I think they're skateboard wheels for the wheelie bar. I'll definitely look at matching the amount of thread engagement on the rod ends when we decide on a final ride height. Next, let's work on setting up that rear axle. The rear axle, is, it's a one inch wide axle shaft. Now, the length of this thing, I think was like 28 inches, maybe 28 and some change. Uh, so I had to find a custom axle shaft. I found a place called like I think it was BMI Carding. They custom made the axle shaft with the keyway included. I think I bought the bearing sets and everything from them. And it was, I don't know, like it was way cheaper than I thought it was gonna be. Our bearing sets that go in through these 
center mass holes. And I also need to put the uh, sprocket hub on the, well, the sprocket, the sprocket hub, the keepers, the brake hub, the brake rotor, and the lock collars for those as well. Now we've got the key stock in here. It's obviously not cut to length. It's just floating. So we'll have to cut and adjust that as we go. Okay, what's else in this box? Wheel hub. That looks like our bearings. There's our front wheel hub. Oh, these look like some weld on plates for the bearing setup, but we don't need those. I need to locate my brake hubs and such. Our hub here for our sprocket, or this is our sprocket, the other one was the brake. So there's our sprocket, again, hardware included, that's good. Here's my sprocket, I think this was a, ooh, was this a 48 or a 52? This is a 48 tooth, so. I'm really not worried about speed. I would I almost still think that this thing's gonna be more powerful than I want it to be for my uses. And then we've got our little, little baby brake rotor there. Our sprocket goes on the driver's side for lack of a better term. Brake on the passenger side. I believe that these two little spacers that we had earlier when we were unboxing, those are to mount the brake caliper. I'm sandwiching those bearings in the plates. There we go, much nicer. I have the axle shaft, I'm gonna use it to align the other one as we're tight, before we tighten everything. I'll pull it back out to put the hubs and everything on. Aha, perfect. Axle's in there, feels pretty bind free. And we're starting at the brake side, I guess. So we're putting a shaft collar on, followed by the rotor, the rotor hub, followed by another collar, and then another collar. Then we're going to put our other hub, our sprocket, another collar. I have four extra collars here. I'm going to put another collar on here because that's going to be to the outside. I can put another collar on by Passing this all the way through. I've got two more shaft collars and I think they're gonna go on the outsides at the bearings. I'm gonna get the sprocket and rotor attached to the hubs and just everything loosely on there because I have to line up the chain to the torque converter and of course the uh, rotor to where the brake caliper will sit. It's got the right pattern, but These holes are not the proper size. Hole diameters on the rotor are much smaller than the hub. We've got a couple of shaft collars that are gonna go on the outside. Bearing surface, I'm at 185 millimeters. I'm at 178, so we're close, but we're gonna 180, 182. Rear axle at least is in place. We've got our wheel hubs. I'm gonna get those slid on. And we do have our <laughs> axle nuts here. Now I do not have a standard wrench large enough for that crescent wrench to get that tightened up. Keep them on there so I don't lose it. Les Schwab just called and my tires are done. The wheel that is said to be bent, uh, it still aired up okay. He says it looks like it got squished a little bit. It's bent 180 degrees from each other. So we'll, uh, we'll see how bad it is, see what it does. I mean, it's a trike, so a little bit of added danger is, is okay, right? I'll have to pick them up. 30 bucks to mount all three, deal because he said it took uh, 70 or 80 PSI to get the tires to seat. So <laughs> glad.
glad it was them and not me. Off to get those, because this thing will, uh, I'll be able to sit on it here before long. Two. No problem. Appreciate it. Yeah. Two. All right, tires are here. Time to work on mounting them up. I don't know which of these is supposedly bent. Oh, actually, yeah, I can see for sure it's this one. God damn. It's bent pretty good there on the back side, so. These may have to get replaced, but for now, they're gonna do the job. It looks, it looks so cool. But before I do that, maybe I should uh, snug up some of my shaft collars quickly first. I'm already a fan of how this is looking though. Okay, front wheel time. Now, I haven't had this front axle out yet, but we also need bolts. The hub on this one, we gotta make, we gotta decide what side to make the beauty side. We've got the hub on the one. So we're gonna go uh, driver's side. Well, that's why the spacing doesn't fit at all. Rather than buy a new hub or anything, I'm going to cut down the one side of the spacer and add the distance to the other side. For now, I'll just clean the one side up on the lathe and the other side I'll have to make a new one eventually just to have it as a single piece. I don't know that it's imperative that it's a single piece, but I'd rather have it that way. So um, I don't really feel like I need to buy a new hub. I'm just gonna make this work. But let's do some measuring. All right, I feel like we're in the realm of tape measure accuracy here. I'm gonna use a ruler as my two and a half, four inches pretty much dead nuts. So. Well, an inch and a half difference between them. Okay, so we're gonna center the tire in the fork right there. And I'm gonna measure my distance here, which looks like three quarters of an inch. Spacing is super close to even. So again, we went with the Predator Ghost 212 kart racing engine. I'm not interested in making more power. It's not what I want. Not at this time. All I want, I think that this thing is already gonna be as much or more than I really <laughs> need in a ridiculous three-wheeler. So. That is a cool little engine. <laughs> so it's gonna go in the cart this way. Output to the driver's side. Exhaust port there. Torque converter bolts on here. Right about there. So our exhaust, we have to make the exhaust. Um, not a big deal. Competition use only. Wow, carb sits really close to that rear tire. Probably keep this as far forward as possible. I'm gonna have to look and see if those guys are leaving it like that or shortening up this intake length. So this is our torque converter. It's got kind of like a primary cover. This is gonna go on here, somewhere like that. That's not, I don't have clearance. Uh, then there's going to be a belt that runs between them. Yeah, there's our front pulley drive. This will go on that output here. Belt between them. Front sprocket is right behind. I do have the chain. All the chain assembly tools. Need a couple of pieces of long hardware for the 
Predator engine down onto the motor plate, so hope they have it. Got the motor mounting hardware. I'm gonna try and get that mounted in. Then I'll work on getting the torque converter mounted. Found the hardware for it, so we should be okay there. I also picked up the hardware to mount the wheelie bar wheels. Picked up a couple of sets of assorted hardware, mainly for things like these nuts that I'll need. It's time to mount the torque converter. We have to find the pattern that matches up with our motor. I had to take the heat shield off of the head, put a straight edge against this, uh, the surface here where this should mount. This bolt was in the way. I took that bolt out. It was just, I assume there, it's not going through anything or bolting to anything. It must just be an accessory mount. So uh, that's off. The only thing I noticed is that it's nice flat edge, except it barely rubs up against the third dipstick, which I wish was offset in a little bit. Oh, actually, I am touching the inside of this radius on the back side of this torque converter is touching the top of this cap. We're modifying it. I'm gonna hit it on the bench grinder. Took off the top and rounded it over a little bit. Don't plan on using that dipstick or that oil fill plug, whatever. Take two, or three, five, whatever it is. We're on there. It looks like we're flush. I don't see any major interference issues. Start on this. I got the flywheel wrench on the other side. <clears throat> Jesus, that was tight. Drive washer first and the spacer. All right. All right, took the uh, rear wheel off again and started getting the brake caliper mounted up. And I can tell that I've, I've got the wrong size rotor, which makes sense with, I was pretty sure that this was the hub that I was supposed to buy, but obviously when I was having the issues from before, but there's obviously a pretty large size gap between the size of the rotor, or the outside of the rotor here and where it should sit in the, uh, in the caliper there. Got the wheelie bars mounted. Put those on there it's been pretty well all the end links are tightened up those are good now i've got the sprocket about in line with the front sprocket but i need to get the I need to get the chain put on figured out you know figured out by length i also think that i have to cut out for the chain on the plastic shroud of the uh, torque converter as well which is going to leave not a ton left and i'm not sure if that's just the way that you're supposed to do those or not in the end we'll see how much is left of this i'll use it and then depending on the situation i may design and laser cut my own or something like that make something make something to cover that up exhaust will be something that we'll have to to fabricate and get get pointed in a place that is out of the way and doesn't burn us this is my uh master cylinder, brake lever, I'll get that on. Handlebar risers that I have are here, but I don't have the bolts for the bottom. I'm gonna have to get that, and I don't have a top clamp, so I'm gonna have to pick that up. Now, these are a one inch diameter riser I picked up on purpose. I did get some seven eighths uh, reducers for the handlebars because I wanted the height about like these, but couldn't find those in a seven eighths diameter bar. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see if we can make these work. Um, we're using pro taper bars for a uh, XR50, but I'll pick up hardware for that tomorrow. Get those on there. Definitely need to get steering stops welded to the frame. As you can see, it goes all the way back and it hits on a hard edge there. So that would definitely leave a mark over time. So my M12 handlebar riser bolts, these things were like uh, 
80 millimeters long and I needed them quite a bit shorter, shorter. So I cut it down on the bandsaw. After I cut it down, I'm just gonna quickly square up the end and then put a chamfer on it so it threads properly. Nice clean and chamfered end. I'm hoping these handlebar risers will work. I was trying to find ones that had a decent rise here rather than using a spacer. I just don't like the way the spacers look. So we're gonna see what we can do. We're gonna need the bars in there before we can get them truly tightened down. But uh, I still have to wait for my clamp for the top. And I just wanted to make sure that the pro tapers sat properly here in the saddle area, which looks like it'll be really close, but it does look like they'll fit. Uh, I ordered a top clamp. Now the top clamp for this style, it's kind of got the offset spacing wider at the top, narrow at the bottom. It's more for like Harleys and things like that. But the problem with that is, is that the spacing between where the riser posts come up is further apart. So I'm still going to order the top clamp that goes with these. And I'm not going to drill the, uh, t you know, triple tree area just because I need it to still sit in the saddle of the bar, or whatever, the, whatever that should be referred to as. Um, so what I, instead I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the one piece top clamp into a two piece by simply cutting it in half and then I'll make two separate pieces. So it'll give me the right bolt pattern. But the reason that I also want that one is I want these riser lengths. It's hard to find a tall riser like this made for this type of setup. So I'm going to cut that in half, make the two risers and those riser clamps, or the bar clamps, whatever you want to call them, they actually have some accessory mounting holes in the top. So I want that to be able to uh, possibly add some further accessories in the future. So I got that's ordered already. Then I should be able to get the bars mounted, get my, start getting my brake lever assembled. Right now I've got the brake master cylinder and lever just zip tied to the top of the frame here, get the throttle assembly on, the kill switch, the bar grips, all of that. I obviously got the seat uh, set on here. It's not proper, but there's a pan that goes underneath of this that the spring will actually mount to, so that'll be sitting proper. And that uh, was supposed to be here on Friday, but it was delayed. Should be here hopefully Monday. So be able to get that on there and then we'll be getting much closer. I need to order the gas tank. I think that's about it. I want to get this thing down off of the off of the bench again. Show you what this thing looks like when it's down on the ground. Seating position, super comfortable. I think the bars are gonna be just about right. Full lock steering may be a little interesting, but I also have some adjustment in the seat to go forward. I think we're in pretty good shape. I like it. I think the bars will be pretty decent. They could be taller, but I don't think they need to be. Plus I can keep the height overall down. I think this is going to be so much fun. Puts the size into perspective a little bit better though. It's way different when it's on the ground versus up on that stand. It is time quickly to take a look at how I want to haul trucks. I think I want to be able to haul more than one. I can walk easily enough with one. I have to worry about the wheelie bar too though. So I'm wondering
how are we going to do this to stack rigs? I feel like I need to CAD up the whole back side of this so I can figure out how to do that. I mean, I can keep it pretty close to the tires. The tires aren't exactly going to expand and there's no suspension, so no concerns there. I need to come up with what I'm going to do. Get the parts drawn and laser cut ASAP so I can get them welded to this chassis. Definitely going to make it detachable as well though, because I don't need it on there all the time. We'll do something that quickly attaches and detaches. I feel like sideways is the way to go. Lengthwise, I don't know. I mean, I would have to stack them. Sideways, I have to stack them too, I guess, but I guess I really only need provisions to hold one at the base and then I can attach them up top however I like. I'm going to think on that. All right gonna do it for the first video more parts to order from here more fun but I mean how silly is this that seat is the first thing I'm fixing <laughs>